Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Hey, hey. Ordered back. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be at $50 if you'll point out the person who threw that into the ring. $50. We can't have people throwing things in this ring that are going to injure somebody else on the opposite side of the ring. Please be reminded, any throwing of objects inside the Sam Houston Coliseum, you will be arrested. This match has been ordered back for the NWA heavyweight title. To my left, the challenger, weighing in at 250 pounds, from Midland, Texas, Chief Wahoo McDaniel. The current National Wrestling Alliance NWA Heavyweight Champion from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing in at 200 and 42 pounds, Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Ric Flair, world's heavyweight champion, and the title on him looks well deserved. There's a man who stays in condition a man who knows what he's doing when he steps in that ring, and while fans don't always like his style, they most certainly have to admire the fact that although he's not the biggest wrestler in the world, he can lay claim to the title that goes right back to wrestling's origin in this country, and that is the one that is held by the National Wrestling Alliance heavyweight champion Ric Flair. And in this case, Wahoo McDaniel, who is one of the toughest people ever to challenge for the title. Flair knows he's in for a battle, there's no question about it. Wahoo never comes out of that ring that doesn't give somebody the battle of their life. And he has an aggressive style mixed in with the the fact that he is an Indian, that he is a former All-American football player, that he is a former professional football player, all of that sports background of his is well placed on the shoulders of Wahoo McDaniel. And he knows how to worry a champion. Right now, he has backed down Ric Flair. Ric Flair came in there with all the confidence in the world and Wahoo just stared at him, looked at him and then walked toward him and Ric Flair decided that he'd better move. So as they pull and tug around on their feet, it is Flair with a side headlock and Wahoo tries to get a well-balanced stance. He comes out with a Japanese arm lock and gets leverage that can take the champion off his feet, and does. So Flair on the canvas, and Wahoo McDaniel working on the arm bar. Double wrist lock. Wahoo, as he pulls that up, is confident, of course, that he's got the controlling interest in that arm, and he knows how to use it. The Double wrist lock is the workhorse hold of wrestling and one that gets a man out of more trouble and puts him into better positions than any other single hold. Not generally a match winning hold, but it's a hold that leads to a match winning hold. The Indian, side headlock, clamps it on there and does so with a guttural vengeance. That blonde hair of um, Ric Flair's is quite a trademark. 
It was the trademark of Gorgeous George. It has been the trademark of a lot of people. And the days have long since passed when a man couldn't walk around with blonde hair and long blonde hair and... Oh! Ric Flair got over Wahoo McDaniel, but he came down on the back of, of McDaniel and then onto the floor and uh, he wasn't quite sure of what, it, what had happened. He thought, oh man, how he came in there that time. He clobbered the champion. He laid that wallop in the jaw with a, with a vengeance and you, the look of absolute surprise on the face of, of, of Ric Flair was almost beautiful to behold. And now as he bears in there and he tries to keep the The, the, the challenger in the corner and Rick Rowe, a give and a take and a slashing tomahawk blows by Wahoo McDaniel and Rick Flair who was determined to uh, face the issue right then and there made a tactical blunder as he comes off on the short end of the chopping and the tomahawk swinging and now it's a reverse chin lock as while McDaniel gets into a position from behind where he can lean his weight into the world's heavyweight champion, bend that neck if he can, bend it forward, and as referee Carl Fergie moves around, checks to see if it's a strangle or not. Now Rick Flair has moved so that it becomes a side headlock, and of course this is, takes a little bit different pressure, it, it hits at a different place and it gives the man in whom it is held a, 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 a little pressure where he is, perhaps he can't stand it. Flair, standing position, you see him pushing into the ropes, that's what he was fighting for, to get up to his feet so he could, uh, could counter. Oh, again he comes up with that blow and he stung Wahoo McDaniel and Wahoo comes back and starts swinging those uh, op open-handed chops. And it is Ric Flair who winds up on the canvas. And oh man, what a wild blow that it came from way, way back. And, as, and again, Wahoo comes back from way behind him. He has a way of moving those chops. His arm disappears behind him, and then as he swings around, he comes in and lay it in there, and the champion goes out on the floor of the Coliseum, determined to think things over. He has made a couple of strategic errors here, and he knows it. And his, he's been too proud to back away from Wahoo, and, the, and he has lost the Battle of the Chop on two distinct occasions. To say nothing about that wallop, that one wild wallop that started it all. So Wahoo comes in and Ra Ra Flair has decided that driving that knee up there could bring Wahoo into a bent over position and make him just a little bit more vulnerable. Flair is arguing with the referee. Flair is determined not to be pushed around by Wahoo or by or, or, or by the referee, but Wahoo is having his problems. The last blows have been good ones for Ric Flair, and the referee wants Wahoo to get out of that corner. He's out, and here's Flair trying to lay his body in there with his, oh, how he does that. He has a tremendous sense of, of timing, he caught the head, he came in there and, and dropped down. Rahu has raised, raised his shoulder, and again he has raised his shoulder at the count of two. That left shoulder of his came up, there's one, and Wahoo is close to being pinned. His leg is held up there, and, and he is wrapped up in the, in the grip, and the, and the champion has his foot against the rope. There he is, the referee caught it. The referee calls for the break, and Ric Flair gets up on his feet, and comes down before Wahoo has a chance to move. He may have strengthened his hold with that particular maneuver. 
And this time it's Wahoo decides that his foot is over the rope. You learn rapidly or you don't stay in the ring. So Wahoo catches it. The blow underneath the chin up against the throat and the champion moves in there to start pummeling him. Reverse arm bar. Here's the Wahoo chant. Listen to those fans as they scream for Wahoo. So the Indian love call is still going. Some people giving that uh, tremulous call that they think is an Indian trait. Some Indians do it. But Wahoo likes to make his sounds the sound of fist colliding with jaw or that tomahawk chop just uh, blasting against his opponent. He says that's the one that inspires him. So Flair took him down. Wahoo is in the ropes. And the... Um, the champion argues with the with the referee, and somebody on the outside is arguing with um, with Flair, and Flair just nonchalantly turns around and tells him what he thinks of him, and then turns his attention to Wahoo McDaniel again. In behind, Flair, and Flair goes for Hamelock. He has he pulls that arm up behind the back, and he puts his foot on the rope again, looking for that extra inch of leverage that gives him a push ahead. So Flair went after the arm. It was behind the back. He was able to drop on the tricep muscle and he came down on it hard. So Flair, with his use of the grip, uncovers the rib case of Wild McDaniel and then drives his foot up in that. But it's the twist on the arm that is adding to Wahoo's discomfort because of the way that that knee landed on it. There's the twist again, and Wahoo is able to bend his arm, and woo, a little exchange, and again Flair starts to try, try to stand up and throw chops with, um, with Wahoo. It just doesn't work that way. Ten minutes have gone in this match. The world's heavyweight title is at stake. The NWA belt is right here to be given to the winner. And Ric Flair is the man who brought it into the ring, and Wahoo McDaniel is the man who hopes to become the first Indian ever to be recognized as the heavyweight champion of the world. That's always been his dream. And right now, his dream seems a little close as he got after his target repeatedly, but that knee bounced right up there and caught uh, Wahoo in the midsection, and now we've got Referee Carl Fergie standing up and laying down the law to, to Flair. Oh, the best chop of the night. The best chop of the match. And Flair felt it. He gets a lift to the back and he dropped him hard and this could be it. There's one, there's two, and there's Flair. That's why he's champion. Because in situations like that, he calls on every muscle of his body to operate at once, to cooperate with each other and to do something. And he got out that time. Flair backing up, trying to get out of the range of Wahoo's chops. But as he's in that corner, he's thinking, trying to maneuver Wahoo into the position he's in. There it is. He did it. And Flair... Gets Wahoo doubled up, but you can see that the foot is high on the rope. He was depending on a quick pin, hoping to catch the referee in behind Wahoo where he couldn't see. Didn't work out that way. And Wahoo has averted the disaster, and the, the champion, oh man, he came in there that time and literally knocked his block off. And here on the floor alongside of us, here on the concrete, is Ric Flair. And Wahoo is impatient. You see him grabbing the blonde hair of Ric Flair, trying to raise him up where he can take a crack at him. And Flair came over that time with a simple gesture. He stuck his thumb in the direction of Wahoo McDaniel's eye. Oh, man, how he 
clobbered him that time. And again, Wahoo with that long, long driving blow that he delivers so well. Wahoo in the ropes and shoulder butt, well applied. And Wahoo goes for the backslide and the champion has been rolled back. There's one, there's two, and he managed to get those long legs of his over there to turn them and to twist his shoulders out of trouble. And through the ropes and outside goes Wahoo McDaniel. He was one arm there by, by the world's heavyweight champion. There's Flair up there into that ring post and Wahoo is on the floor. He has been smashed head first into the, into the ring post. He is up against the barrier that is around the ring and Flair is anxious to keep him there. He, again, he comes around with a first class driving chop and the, whoa, put a stop to it. There is Flair and Flair is dragged into the, into the ring post and down onto the concrete. And the referee now is trying to get Wahoo back in the ring. Flair has hit that thing solidly and hard. Almost it seemed with the whole length of his face. And his head is, is bleeding. He is in the ring. He is trying to avoid Wahoo if he can. And Wahoo is trying to make sure that he just doesn't avoid him. The, the swinging chop of the Indian again. And now Ric Flair goes through the ropes and over and he goes up and down and he caught a chop and this could be it. Wahoo hit him on the way down. There's one and there's two and I'll tell you that Flair can find a rope with that leg and of course it's the referee's prerogative but few referees will call a man down if he's got a foot over the rope and he is seizing. Wahoo, Indian War dance, victory dance, rain dance. Doesn't matter, it's Wahoo. And as he comes in there now, he tries to splash Ric Flair all over the canvas. 15 minutes have gone by. He's going for a back body drop, a beautiful maneuver. There's two and... There it is, again, that foot over the ropes, and, and Wahoo has come close, but close counts only in horseshoes. And over the top rope goes the, the champion. He, the referee says he did not get thrown over the top rope. He went over of his momentum after he was hit, and Wahoo finds that jaw of his repeatedly on top. There it is, there's a three count, and Ric Flair, who has used the rope repeatedly to avoid being pinned, used the rope that time to balance himself and to win the match. Ric, there is the winner, and still the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, and Wahoo McDaniel is disconsolate.